The year 2020 has only just begun and preparation for the race in 2023 is riding up some political parties. And many have complained about the number of lawmakers with the recent call to decrease the numbers. Will anything change? This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. The 2023 elections might be three years away, but its anticipation is certainly causing a roll in the beginning of 2020 as the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Walid Jibrin, who stated that every interested member of the party was free to participate in the 2023 elections, has stated that his life is being threatened following the statement. And on another end, some youths under the ages of the Iowa Youth Consultative Movement have stated that they are supporting Southern Presidency in 2023, claiming that the political allied from the Northern origin have failed the region and Nigeria. However, I ask, why are we already looking at 2023 when we have an opportunity to work on Nigeria now? And joining me to discuss this this evening is political analyst Larry Emenike. Thank you for joining me this evening, Thank Larry. You. Thank you Once very again. Much. Yeah, and also yeah. with me this evening on the show is Rahman Adebiyi, also a political analyst. Thank Good evening to you, you gentlemen of the press. Now let's get talking. And I will start by saying, let's look at the statement I'm credited to, to the board chairman. What does this say still of our politics? Well, it shows that, uh, the, like you said, the race to 2023 is starting already. Yes. Yeah, because 2023 is just like, it's going to be like uh, tomorrow. It's going to happen on us as a country. And uh, in raising up to shortly after the Supreme Court judgment, that race now became firm up. Yes. The clear court that, yeah, the president, is, the incumbent is going to run his four-year term and it's going to be a new uh, candidate uh, come 2023. And a new candidate come 2023, is it going to run on the nuance of its south and not divide? Or is it going to run on uh, the campaign that we've been hearing from some elite from the north mm. to say that, oh, power is going to retain? So these are the questions that have been in the in the hair. So the JOTU for 2023 has started. And uh, of course, it's uh, somebody who wants to win in that election will start earlier than before now. Okay. Uh, some some candidates have started long before now because you have to, in politics, the permutation has to be long way ahead because nobody's going to wait for you. It's not a reward system per se, you, you know, which uh, most of us always think of because that's where we think, yeah, I think it's fair, but okay. politics is beyond that. You, you know, it's a, it's a force uh, that, that give back to those who who ask for it or work towards it. Okay. Um, Larry, let me, let me have a take on this. Is it possible, going by the statement credited but to, to the board chairman, um, the board chairman of PDP, is it possible for everybody within a political party to, to engage actively um, in the political race? Now, in view, it's 2023. I think it's made distractions, you know, and this is something that uh, anybody that loves this nation needs to frown at. Uh, it's just another way of distracting those that are in leadership and even the followers from the reality, the stark reality that we are facing. This is the time that we're supposed to be talking about re-governance because the budget, they just passed the budget yes. of uh, the 2020 budget. And as of today, whatever that budget has to go with, some of us, some certain people are not uh, in the know of the content. We just finished talking about that, uh, that seven billion you know, for the maintenance or what they call it of the National Assembly complex. We just started, you know, finished talking about whether the president will run again, that he came, he came out uh, some few hours or few days ago to, to deny it, and he sees that, uh, that he's not going to run again. So all those things, as far as I'm concerned, are made distractions, and uh, we really need to deal with some of, uh, some of those shenanigans. That is not what we want. That is not the challenge at this moment. Nigerians are looking forward for real governance, thorough governance. You know, a, governor, a government that uh, is going to impact on the lives of the average Nigerian. So purely, and uh, to be sincere with you, I'm not really happy with whatever we are, you know, whether the, the statement created to the BOT chairman or not is a political affair. So if his life 
you know, seems to be in danger, letting go to the, you know, the, the, the necessary authority that has to do with, deal with that particular Well, he issue. said he has petitioned the, the IGO police for that. But we're also, let's, let's take a look at that for a moment. I mean, and he has come and said this is not the first time he's getting such threats. And our politics has not been void of thuggery. Now, is this something we should seriously look into? A, a politics devoid of toggery, of killings? Um, let's, let's hear from you, bro. I think we're, we're in a point in which uh, the question we must ask ourselves is uh, making statements that are very sensitive. Yes. At this time around, uh, you know, the statement shouldn't have a weight if it was not in the media. Do you understand? If it shouldn't carry any weight. And uh, for the fact that we say in, in, in the life of political system, uh, you know, you must be able to define governance in separation from politics. And because you can't play two, two together, at the same time, give the best to the people. That's one. At the same time, um, because when we talk governance, then we talk about, yeah, we should be talking about the, at the beginning of the year, about the budget for the year, about what it's going to give, about the intricacies, so that Nigerians will, will appreciate what that fiscal policy is all about. Then, in terms of what he has said, um, I, I think uh, I think he's already done that from some of the reports I heard yes. to report to the police because that's what he can do. So, because it is his life and the, and uh, it is a statement that he has made. Because that any statement made now in this political sphere yes. that is not in in, in the in tandem, in tandem. With, the with the expectation of the players, they, they would naturally be. Uh, frustrations and then retaliations and what have you. So if that if things like that happen, I think it's, it's still in line with the political play, and then it should keep it at, at that level and not bring it to the national sphere in in such a way that it will begin to question and interfere with people who should be giving us results in terms of the, of the, of democracy. As uh, you know, uh, now dabbling back into the politics of the day because dabbling into the two at the same time. Yes, we're human beings, we cannot do without the, uh, each, each other, the two, but let's have a higher concentration or focus on governance. Because right now, Nigerians are asking that we want a, 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 a wealthy nation, we want a prosperous nation, we want a nation devoid of poverty that is ravaging us as we speak. We want a nation where the cost of governance is, bare, is at its barest minimum. We want a nation where an average man will wake up and see opportunity in his country without thinking of, should I get out of this country now because I've lost all hope in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's consider, um, Larry, let's consider the zoning system which our politics and democracy has been characterized with all this while. Now, is it ever possible, will it ever be possible for us to, to run a, po a politics, a democracy void of, of zoning, which seems to be like the major cross in our politics? You see, we, we must be sincere with ourselves and we must take responsibility of whatever we say we want to achieve as a people, the kind of government we want to run, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the reality of this, you know, nation called Nigeria. You see, you have a situation whereby, you know, we are running a federation. We claim that we are running a federal system of government. We claim we have something they call quota system. We claim we have something that they call federal, uh, uh, federal character. character and all whatnot. And when you look at some of the content of some of all these things, you will discover that something like that zoning system has a play in it. So the danger we have a situation whereby you choose one and you shy away with the other one. You have a situation whereby somebody that has about 280 or 300 from a city in an examination coming from the east, or maybe let's use the Imo state, let me not go to you know, the geographic sphere, from Imo state scores 300. And you have somebody from KB state who scores 28. And in a federal institution, what they will consider is federal character, quota system. You understand me? So if we are using some of those things, you know, to judge because it favors us, then you come out and you have something because of, you, because of what we experienced during the military regime. You know, whereby some certain geopolitical zone, we are giving some certain preferential treatment. And now you believe that it's going to work against you, then you are kicking against it. It doesn't make sense. 
You understand? So if we are running a federal system of government that we know what it means and we've been applying it in our systems, I think the, the onus lies on those that are in the liturgy of some of these political parties to do the needful. One, you cannot justify a situation whereby we had about two term tenure of somebody from the north, you understand me, you have another one. Why we have these three major ethnic groups that we are running with? You, you know, you have the southeast, you have the south south, you have the southwest, you have northeast, north central, and so many others. Then you come to the other one, you have three major ethnic groups. You understand me? That are classified into some certain things. It is when we go back to those regions, you will discover that this and this can be matched, this and this can be matched, and this is what we get. Then you say you are not going to apply that. Automatically, you are creating chaos. Automatically, you are creating the vision. So as far as I'm concerned, having that particular, uh, uh, what do they call it? The, 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 the zoning, zoning system. Yeah. is something that is practicable, if we are sincere, is something that is going to even enhance our nationhood. That brotherliness will be there. So you're saying it's something that is practical, practicable, which means it has not been practical, practical all this while. Now, Roman, let me, let me ask you this. Um, do you think we can actually run a politics devoid of zoning? The way Nigeria is, is structured right now, yes. it's structured three up, three down. And when something is structured... Three up, three down. Three yes. down. When it's structured three up, three down, the, 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 the best of equation you can do is to divide by two. And it will give you, uh, you know, and the result is either you go north or you go south. And when you do that division, you know, bring some level of fairness into play. And then when the fairness come, then you are now left to, and now I begin to ask the issue of equity. Because equity will now come into play at the end of the day. Because you must apply fairness first, then equity come. And, um, at, I, and my own proposition is that for government to take this, the assembly take it into note, and you know, find a way when they are reviewing the constitution and you know, had the clause of zoning in, into it, so that we won't continue to have crisis. Because uh, we can begin to say, sense the crisis now. Where is it going to snowball to? We don't know. Yes. So, uh, but the best thing we can do now is, okay, as, uh, as people are throwing in different tantrums into the air, you know, the best for any Nigerian to do, especially the people of the northern extraction, is to say that let's begin to practice fairness. When they practice fairness, then the, 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 uh, the rationale that we all have of zoning will come into play. And when that comes into play, then the equity will now beget the southern region okay. to now say to themselves, how, how, how fair, sorry, how equitable are we going to be on the table? So, but in politics at times, equity, equity you know, uh, is a function of how well your alliances, how okay. well uh, your efforts, okay. how well connected political you know, because the political equation at times devoid all those things. But it, in, in the best interest of all Nigerians, because we must see ourselves as one, and in, and in moving this country forward, uh, since we have bought into that ideology and we've practiced it, because when you buy into an ideology the first time and you practice it for, as we've done in Nigeria now since 1999 till, till now, about 20 years, it means that we have become master of it. So when you become master of it, you don't just get in the middle and change, and, and change the gun. If you change the gun, it means it's going to shoot in different direction. And it's, it's not going to be in, in favor of the larger okay. uh, uh, society. Yes. Yeah. All right, Larry, let's, let's take a look at the call by the Iowa Youth Consultative Movement. Um, their, their call seems to be get, gaining a whole lot of momentum for power come 2023 to be shifted to the South-South. Now, isn't this too early? This is just... 2020, is, is there more to this call than it is that meets the eye? And there, is, there is more to that call. And as far as I'm concerned, I've looked at the, the, the call and those that made the call. You know, a little known group, you know, I will use the word, you know, that call as far as I'm concerned is inconsequential. Why? Because it, it's not enough to make a call. You know, the reality of now and even the popular view of the people has we are. But is, is that call is, valid though? Is, is, is you said inconsequential. Is it a valid call? You know, if you look at the content, I don't want to look at it from the. the because the they gave their reasons. Reasons no, they, why they think power should shift now to the south south. The reasons yeah. given yeah. are they valid? Okay, they are valid. Yes. 
But when you look at the content of the call, you know, where they were going regarding that call, it is not a popular view of the people of the South. I don't know if you understand me. You know, in the South here, yeah, it might look as if maybe things are not gathering momentum. If you look at the South, somehow, if not because of this selfish interest of some certain, uh, they use the word political buccaneers, you know, the, 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 these elites that has taken over power, yeah, and believe that yes. you understand. You see, if not because of their, uh, their, 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 their greed, you understand me, some of those calls, people might not take it serious because even coming to the soil, I think it's that particular call will even create more division than what there is meant to achieve if not taken care of well. You understand me? And I also use the word distraction from that particular call. When I look at the group, they were little on, you know, unknown group with no major characters, even in the northern politics there. You understand me? And I believe they are looking at, I have a suspicion, which I don't want to even, you know, say now. But the suspicion there is that some of these guys has, you know, gathered themselves. They believe that one or two people that they want to go and meet to sell this particular, you know, bogus idea you know, or suggestion to them, either to rip them off, to achieve one political gain or the other, or create division within the South. So as far as I'm concerned, as somebody from the South and somebody that follows politics, you know, you're not, you're know, not, buy, you're not buying into no, I'm it. I'm not buying into okay. that cheap. Ramana, you know, I, I see your facial expressions <laughs> like you, you don't totally subscribe to his, to his um, no, submission. No, no, yes. no, no I, I think uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned, in politics, different things fly. And when different things fly, people people throw different tantrums into the air. People people test waters. People people go so high to some level to it want is. to know what you what's your process. And you know when you hear things like that, for me, I, the best thing is just to ignore, ignore them. It. You know, you know when you ignore and you allow the people who because the first thing I think we should cross the the barrier now uh, in terms of politics is for the key players to agree. Uh, in the in the simple norm they've, that they practice over time, that they should follow the rotational uh, basis that they've set. I think when that has been achieved, then the the players in the south will come to the table and you know test their hands in uh, at, at who is going to emerge and who is going to emerge based on their popularity and other factors based known to them. Yes. So I think that's the best thing that we can do now. So that that the call is coming from the north that it should go to a particular subset of the region. Yeah, it's, it's, it's their inalienable right to do so, but I think it should not be taken as serious as, at that level. But it should just follow the fact that, yes, everybody now should begin to say that, yes, power should come to the south so that uh, we can have what I call one Nigeria. And fairness, because when you say fairness in politics, you are saying that, yes, uh, we can have a, a division that will say, okay, begin to move uh, region by region. You know that would be unfair, but when but when we go by the division of the south and the north, then that's a little fair, you know, to slice the big chunk on the table, to make it, uh, to have more participatory effects. Now I, I would have thought that rather of this youth um, coming out to support power, that the presidency being shifted to the south south mm. come 2023, mm. that the not too young to, uh, to run bill has just been passed. I'll, that why don't they get actively involved? I'll tell I mean, you something on yes. that. I'll tell you something on that quickly. I think first and foremost, when you settle that part, yes. Of oh, we've all agreed the void of the tantrums of saying now we want to say power must retain somewhere. When we all agree that power must come to the south. You know, then the the effect of the young not too young will now begin to play out because we can see the effect of the interplay that they had in the last election. Yes. Ma majority of the not too young people that are run on the new party's platform were from the south. Yeah. And, and they, were, they were specific though. The person has to be a youth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. Were yeah. Well, I think yeah. don't subscribe to that. You know, when you in politics, yes. when you hear things like that, because if you check the the ascending to power in Nigeria uh, of what we've had in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. You see that uh, there's been like uh, a, a system where, where, whereby people who have been Nigerian president, you know, has been either a former president or a past governor and all that, you know. So there's been some things like that. So when you look at it like that, 
from that point of view, I think that would defeat that purpose. So, but what we're saying is that the not too young to run will yes. run, but majority of them ran. Who ran in 2019 <coughs> were extracted from the South, majority of them. So that tells you something. That tells you that the South itself is positioning itself well with its young people to come, you know, to come on board to be to begin to compete. Because when you compete for elections, yeah, it doesn't mean that they were going to win in the first time during 20 to 2019. But if they come into, into play, which means that we now have active young people in politics yeah. who are going to challenge status quo, one, who are going to you know, get infused into the know-how of how it is done. And majority of them we have seen and, and, and they have experienced and tested their hands. So I think that's a good way to go. So we begin to leave, but it will from my point of view. So the division is going to be between the young and the old in the South to now begin to contend. So for the Southerners to now say, yes, are we going to give our best, uh, you know, create a disruption in the political system to, to bring out the best of our youth? Or are we going to go with, uh, you know, somebody who is with a tradition that has been on the table? Okay, um, Larry Medikin, now this, this call seemed to go against the political permutations of um, Professor Angu Abdullahi led Northern Elders Forum, who want the presidencies to still remain um, in the North come 2023. <clears throat> what do you see playing out here? Power shift to the South, I don't think anybody is doing anybody any favor. And that is what we are seeing now. You know, by, by May fact that uh, Anga Abdullah, is, you know, you know uh, side of that particular call mm. of the Semarewa, you know, this one now is the youth from some part of the youth front, yeah. not even the major one that uh, <clears throat> the popular one we know. So I think uh, it's just one of those things I said earlier. And that is why I'm not so moved, you know, with that particular, mm, you know, call by coming from those. Uh, those little known organizations. But then I think it should not be a distraction even to the polity. We, <clears throat> we suppose we have to follow things the way they're supposed to be. We are watching, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I will still use the word is inconsequential, their core. Thank you very much, Larry Aminike and also Ramana Dibi, political analyst. Thanks for staying with us. We'll go for a short break now, and when we return, the number one of Nigerian lawmakers and how it affects the cost of governance has been put on trial. Do stay with us.